president never mentioned needing money for police to stop a crime wave when he was selling the American Rescue Plan? Well, the president did mention that the American Rescue Plan, the state and local funding, something that was supported by the president, a lot of Democrats who supported and voted for the bill, could help ensure uh, local cops were kept on the beat in communities across the country. As you know, didn't receive a single Republican vote. I just want to be clear with you. It's okay. It's okay for a man to go into the women's section, show his penis around the other women, young little girls under age. Your spa, we spa, condone that. Is that what you're saying? If you decided to work out in order to change your body's appearance to avoid weight stigma, that is still fat phobia. This is why education is not working for so many students of color because we are context-driven people. We can't tell a story without telling the 10 things that happened that led up to that moment. Uh, Alice <laughs> Narcissus Caligula Shattuck uh, Esquire. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? That, that's New York K-12 school teachers right there. It means that like, uh, so these are New York school educators who are talking about like equity in education in New York. And this one woman who's talking about it, who is herself an African-American woman. Okay. Uh, it's black with a capital B. Black with a way. capital B. I just want to be clear that this uh, analysis is not coming from a white person because I would be scared to play it if it were coming yes. from a white person. But she wants us to know that the school system isn't working for black kids because they don't do well with this kind of like analytical thinking. And uh, they do better with like more relational, contextual let me play it because I don't understand. Thinking. I still don't mm -hmm. understand. And I think black people, we are relational people. Mm -hmm. We are people of context. Like it's very Western and European to to dissect and analyze and take apart things. Whereas mm -hmm. Afrocentric schooling or Afrocentric spirituality or African epistemology or ways of knowing, everything is connected. So this is why education is not working for so many students of color, because we are context-driven people. So she so far has said all of this very confidently, very self-assuredly. And uh, the other people in the well, video are nodding okay. to this. So I don't know what the frig at all. I don't get it. So context, does she finish up and tell me? We can't tell a story without telling the... 10 things that happened that led up to that moment. There's no such thing as like thinking isolation, isolating yourself from nature, from your family. Like it's just not part of our uh, ways of knowing and being in the world. So when we tap, tap into the ways that we understand the world, students are able to make wonderful connections and unleash their brilliance and their wisdom. So black children need to be taught differently in order to unleash their brilliance and their wisdom because they don't do well with all this analytical uh, dissecting of Maybe she's exhibit A of why they don't do well. If they don't um, do well. Yeah, I think that she's I've never educator. heard a more racist thing said I don't even by get it. somebody I, I wanted, who I is in charge of education. I want to declare it racist, but I cannot comprehend any of it. So we can't just give an answer without mentioning all the things that led up to it. What does that mean? What's an example of that? Um, I, I don't know what, what an example of that. What is be. anything she said? She's a psycho. What? Well, I, like she's saying, the black students like can't dissect and break down and do these sort of like rationalist analytical models of thinking that they ha do better with like a more creative, like thing where they talk about the relationships between things and the context and it's not so like just you know broken down into like so if you're teaching history like this happened the state this happened the state this happened like that, it's they, not, black, black, black kids can't, can't do that they need to know more like the relationships and the history and like and that's how they unleash their brilliance so i guess they have to be taught totally differently than white kids according to this person so maybe I mean like I don't is she advocating for like a separate school system for black I don't get what she wants because it sounds racist to me so I don't know I don't know I mean like I think she and Richard Spencer the actual neo Nazi would probably be like right in line with how they think black kids learn that it's somehow different from white kids but I mean and it's all just bunk anyway we know for a fact now like. 
evidence-based science around how kids learn shows you that like all the learning styles stuff like that's all just bunk like kids learn how they learn you teach kids how to read the same way and they learn how to read like it just there are things that work because they developmentally work for kids at certain ages and there are things that don't work like even just like how people are like oh I'm a visual learner I'm an auditory learner all that stuff has been totally debunked as like junk science now at this point like we know how kids learn there are good methods for teaching kids things and they work for everybody so I mean uh, you know with the exception of like learning disabilities and other specific cases the kids kids learn how they learn like we can teach all kids the same and like obviously some kids are going to be better at some stuff than other kids and that's fine but like I don't think sitting down and saying like the black kids can't learn a certain way because they're black and they're a relational people like who i mean the hell who so is this going to be the mainstream is this going to be the thing now is this the, the abandonment of trying to educate black kids are we just we're now retreating saying it can't be done i mean i, I mean guess that, so. that is so oh, Ooh, that's a powerful statement. Wow. Well, remember does, we remember it, we talked about on this show Jamal Bowman uh, tweeting out the cartoon of all the little animals. Like there's like the monkey and the giraffe and the lion and the tiger and the fish and the teacher is saying like now because we're going to be fair, we're going to teach you all to climb the tree. And like he's like, see, that's why the school systems are bad. And it's like, wait, I didn't say it. You said it. That's like to say that certain kids can't learn because of their innate characteristics is, I mean, that seems pretty racist to me, but what do I know? I don't know. You know what? And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense? This is maybe what good white liberals have been communicating subtly to each other mm-hmm. you know they've never thought they they think they look at the black community and say they can't do it mike no the uh, the other part portion is a lot of people don't know how to register not everybody in the community in the hispanic and the african-american community particularly in uh, uh rural areas that are distant and or inner city districts know how to use know how to get online to determine how to get in they line can't, for yeah, that they can't, COVID mm, vaccination. No, that's that's they, hard. They at the more context, right? that's why they should be online. At the particular store. That's why the... The data vaccine. shows mm-hmm. young black entrepreneurs are just as capable of succeeding given the chance as white entrepreneurs are. But they don't have lawyers. They don't have... They, they, they don't have accountants. But they have great ideas. Does anyone doubt this whole nation would be better off from the investments those people make? And I promise you, that's why I set up a national small business administration that's much broader, because they're going to get those loans. As long as they, we can help them get online mm-hmm. and uh, hunt and pack it until they right. can find it. It's also the- hard for them to get IDs. Uh, yep. They also are afraid the <laughs> Latinx people are afraid they might be deported if they get the vaccine. Yep. All kind. I mean, yep. like it just poor goes kids on are just on. as bright and just as talented as white kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> so that's where this is going right, to the most really uh, toxic uh, level that it could be. Just. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. How about we just let the teachers teach stuff to the kids? Right. And not set anybody up with certain expectations based on their skin imagine color? That, Isn't that you, like, I mean, imagine, is that, how is this controversial in 2021? I don't get it. How is this even a thing that we're talking about? Didn't we do this as a country and decide that it's bad? But maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing is that this is where progressives are. The black kids, they simply just can't learn it's just as a matter of course in your day no they're not going to do well in the test so get rid of all the tests crush down all of the standards and all the institutions right now because they simply can't they do not have the ability to do it it's not us it's not the teachers unions uh preventing bad teachers from being fired and sucking dry all the inner city school systems can't be us as a good white progressive living in a nice town uh, with a range rover Mm -hmm. then this is how you think yeah, no, they can't handle that. They don't learn in the same way as us. They don't do that. And, and, and you <laughs> know, that, that's I've just during the never day. Heard. And at night, 
yeah, yeah, they just shoot each other by the dozen. Sometimes 30, sometimes 60 a weekend. They just shoot each other. That's fine. No, no, you don't have to get upset about that. No, no, we don't have a lawn sign for that. You don't, you don't need one. We don't have a lawn sign for the... Uh, for the school system failing these kids as well. We don't need a lot of Or you just claim it's white supremacy and right, then you exactly. can feel good about it. You know what? Some people haven't done the work and that's why mm-hmm. this keeps happening. We just, we can't, uh, we can't stop uh, black kids from shooting each other because white supremacy, yeah, maybe you should do the work and then they'll stop shooting each other. Try that. Have you ever tried that, honey? See? That is incredible. <laughs> wow. So, Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Well, we made some progress for a while on civil rights, <laughs> so now I guess we're done and we're moving backwards. Yeah, That's no, it. I think we are. <laughs> uh-oh. Do we have a visitor here? Nope, he's he All right. checked in on us. So, um, let us see, Alice. That's New York City teacher. Let's go to the spa, Alice. Okay. This is a woman who wanted to enjoy the spa. This is in L.A.? In L.A., uh, a, a high-end spot, sounds like. And mm-hmm. then some dude walked in with his ding uh showing. Yes, into the women's area of the spa. Exactly. He came in naked. And she had a problem with this. This is a little bit of her having a problem with this. We, we spa, so you don't, so it's okay. I just want to be clear with you. It's okay. It's okay for a man to go into the women's section, show his penis around the other women, young little girls under age, your spa, we spa condone that. Is that what you're saying? Like I asked. It's so he, so he can stay there. He can stay there. They're in the process of telling her it's the law and they can't discriminate against based different gender, gen, based on different gender identities or whatever. They can't do that. So uh, so they're they're trying to explain this to her. She's still upset. There are other people around her who are also upset Mm -hmm. in the video. Some of them are trying to get their money back from going to the spa because they understandably don't want to be in the spa with the dude with his junk hanging out in the naked in the room with them because that's a little uncomfortable. So there, there's like women there trying to get their money back. There's her. And then, and then because of course woke dude steps in who is this you know, bearded dude who's also at the spa waiting in line. And he's like, well, is it a transgender person? Because if it's a transgender person, then their identity is valid and this and that. And oh like, my he goes God. off on her. Does he well, swear? Uh, no, he doesn't swear, but he's trying to explain to this okay, clearly so very to, bigoted, to, to this find it, I may very have bigoted this. person that this is time. totally fine and valid, that that there's this dude in the locker room with them, with these women, and that it's totally fine and that she's obviously just being a bigot. At one point, he even tells her that he would be fine with it if a naked woman walked into the men's <laughs> area. And she's like, yeah, I'm sure you would, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Hold on. So uh, Hold clearly, on. clearly, you know, she's just a bigot. That's obviously what's going on here. And uh, the spa is just trying to protect the gender identity of this poor, defenseless okay, trans so this woman. Is part one that we we, we spa. So you don't. So it's spa. We spa condone that. Is that what you're saying? Like I asked. So does anybody say anything so more in this he one? He can stay there. In this one, not really. He can stay there. All right, let me go to the next one. They're here. trying to get their money back and stuff. Oh, there's God. all these next people around here. I'm already angry. And then <laughs> there's... Are you, are you, are you, are you... So I understand No, yeah. Okay, it's not okay. It's not okay. Okay, that's traumatizing to see that. I'm a woman. I think this is a place right here. I'm told. Only for women. So how dare you sit up here and tell me I don't have a right as a woman no, to defend? I'm telling you, he has a penis, <laughs> a full <laughs> and testicle. Okay. And the guy, the guy looks at her like she's not understanding. Like she's being intolerant. This guy. Oh God. <laughs> and it, I don't care what it, it's a man. You got one? You're a man. Okay. And if we went into the men's section with our anatomy, that would be... Well, it wouldn't probably, but you might not like women, so it might not, okay? (laughs) And we don't know, but for me and for a lot of other women, they do not feel comfortable, and it's not okay. Okay? So, well, yeah, yeah, you're sorry. You should be, sweetie, and you're out of alignment, and this is not right. I can tell you that much, all right? And I know you're out of work. Yeah, it must be hard. It must be hard not being a real man, huh? Try it. So, like I said, uh, I want every woman 
get all of their information on. Oh, okay, well, I don't care what the security no, guard, he's just security. I'm telling you, that yeah. sometimes predators go down and we'll just go through the woman's side. Okay, well, now he's sitting in there. Okay, well, security. No, 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 so, no he doesn't want to be security. Oh, okay. I'm just saying he should have not been allowed. To exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, we know that. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. So, see, there's so, other women here agreeing with her. Right. It's, uh, it's just you know the law and this one woke dude in the spa who's decided it's fine for this other dude to be in there with the women even though it's really none of it doesn't affect him i don't know why he's getting involved on behalf of the dude who's in the woman's locker room but yeah he's such a transgender woman and she's like well he has a penis so <laughs> here's the charlotte observer uh on this issue Yes, the thought of male genitalia in girls' locker rooms and vice versa might be distressing to some, but the battle for equality has always been in part about overcoming discomfort. Oh, yeah. See? It's just, it's exactly the same thing as the white people who weren't comfortable with black people. Exactly the same. Pure bigotry. That's what we know about it. That's fine. So, that's great. And uh, that's L.A., like we said, I guess, you know, spas are going to be off limits for normal people soon. Like, if you don't want to, if you're a woman and you don't want to see naked dudes, then you just can't go to the spa anymore, I guess. It's not for you because okay. that's what the law is. All right, Alice. But there is a fight for equality that I think uh, we are on the right side of history on. I think what's not? most scary is comments like these because people don't realize that fat phobia is rooted in racism and more specifically anti-blackness. When slavery became more widespread, it was hard. Okay, so when we were just playing, when we just played that with school committee people saying, mm -hmm. or the teachers, and I couldn't understand a word she said, maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe this break off religion of woke progressivism, maybe seriously, they're just beginning to form their own language. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is. I'd say there's some truth to that. Yeah, but I'm not meant to really understand it. It's just, it's all rooted in in different uh root words etc that i'm mm -hmm. not supposed to know i don't i'm not from that land um <clears throat> and now uh, this young lady speaking on tiktok there is a l tiktok unique language and mm -hmm. dialect and she has it yeah and it's made to go and it's very pointed and so you know and then that and that it's true yeah <clears throat> and a lot of these p kids are very articulate they enunciate very well Right. But I think that's part of the art form. <clears throat> right. Well, to I mean, show that we I am this messaging is so clear, obvious and immaculate that I'm speaking clearly, obvious and immaculate. And that's they dress it up to match the message. So it's you if you have a problem with it. Well, you're just dumb. Yes, exactly. I think what's most scary is comments like these because people don't realize that fat phobia is rooted in racism and more specifically anti-blackness. When slavery became more widespread, it was hard to just rely on skin color as a way to identify slaves. Fatness as a physical descriptor fit the savage narrative that whites used to oppress black people. Obviously, a lot has changed since the 18th century. We know fatness is not specific to black people, and we've used that as an excuse to shape a societal beauty standard that is anti-fat. That includes being thin. That includes gaining muscle so you can look toned and have less fat on your body. And what happens if you don't meet the standard of beauty? You will face systemic oppression. You cannot always determine health by your body's appearance. So yes, if you work out strictly for appearance-based reasons, you are fat phobic. And before you comment, read the definition of fat phobia. Mm -hmm. See? Working out to be thinner is fat phobic. If you decided to work out in order to change your body's appearance to avoid weight stigma, that is still fat phobia. Fat people can be fat phobic. Skinny people can be fat phobic. I'm fat phobic. And it's no one's fault. We are conditioned to hate fat people. If that's why you started and that's why you're still going, then cool. Great for you. I don't think we are conditioned to hate fat people. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think so. I think culturally... We're conditioned to hate fatness. Uh, I think we are conditioned by nature but right. i don't even think we're conditioned by nature i think by nature we're repulsed by yes but <laughs> by it's not simply the fatness it's the appearance of gluttony and sloth right and those kind of things like it just aren't good for the tribe you know mm -hmm. somebody is obviously uh you know benefiting from the riches of the labor the tribe is engaged <laughs> in but has rendered himself 
incapable of enjoining in the labor, right, or contributing in a in a way. I think there's a there's an there's an animus towards fat people. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I'm a fat person, and I have animus towards people. Well, fat people can be fat phobic, as well, you absolutely. pointed out. But but I have animus towards people who are fatter than me. I'm <laughs> and like, people I'm who like, are fat who like, aren't do fatter something than you. With yourself, We're like come on. Yes, and uh, yeah, exactly. Then there's the, the, the double standard, mm -hmm. of course, because guys judge women, you know. That just proves the intersectionality of misogyny and fat phobia, honey. Although, fatness is embraced in some cultures more than others. There's no doubt. That's true. No, about that, that, that. Apparently yours. So there you go. <laughs> I just Working like out you. It's still really good for you, no matter the reason. But I hope one day you learn to love fitness for the actual health benefits, like for your heart and your joints and your muscles, not just because you look a certain way. Mm -hmm. So, much like people disdain fat people for the the messaging they get from the person being fat mm -hmm. people um people like and appreciate strong fit people yeah I would because think so. they look handsome and they look um they're they show the opposite of sloth they show um uh, they show vigor right. and strength yeah. and determination and um, well, and working out amps up your testosterone. It's right. attractive. It's a sign, like you're saying, of virility, of exactly. youth, of power, of all these things. I mean, there's a reason why there's no like Greek and Roman marble statues of huge fat people. Right. Right. And it's I also not think, a thing. They don't have that. They're all the, like buff with ripped abs. Not and only stuff. that, but but like for for women at least with guys, the idea of protection comes in naturally. Yeah. Can this big lughead protect me <laughs> and down the road, our family? And these are all, these are all things. Yeah, or no is he going to die of a heart attack in right. five years? Like, it's a concern. Right. But these are, this is nothing to be upset about. It's fine it's that nature does something. It's systemic oppression. C it's conditions. systemic oppression. So they're also really upset because they've come up with this, um, this new medical device. So, and the idea is, like, they don't want to do surgeries on people who are, like, really severely obese because there's risks to it, yeah. not just because they're mean. We're being told it's because of fat phobia in medicine, which is not the case. But uh, they don't want to do surgeries on hugely obese people because there's risks to putting somebody who's obese, like, under general anesthesia and stuff. Like, you can die from it. It's Your body yeah. doesn't hold up as well. Or even more disgraceful. You eat through it. <laughs> it's just terrible what happens. So, but I mean, but any surgery is not just lap band surgery. Like, they need you to lose weight before they can do surgeries on really, really heavy people. Like, that, you just, it's not safe to do it. So, they invented this new medical device for fat people to be able to get surgeries where it locks your jaw shut so you can only drink liquids. <laughs> <laughs> Which it boggles my mind that they consider this a medical device. It like uses magnets to like seal your teeth closed. Yeah, but so wiring you your jaw shut is not a new thing. And I'm sure it's been used to lose weight before. It's, I don't know, I, but I'm, there there's some new medical device to do with that me, uses magnets. It's in the news me you this week. Convince a bunch of 16 year old girls to do that to lose. Probably, weight. I mean, girls do liquid diets and juice fasts Look, and stuff do all the team time. Team Alice. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, but, uh, fat people are not pleased about the jaw closing device <laughs> for fat people to lose weight. <laughs> they think this is evil. And, uh, I found one fat activist who tweeted the following. Uh, this is Ombre Gordon, she, her, hers tweets regarding that jaw closing device it's horrible it's not a new concept and for fat people especially fat people with eating disorders seeing it can be triggering as all get out for that reason i'm not going to post a picture or link here in your rightful outrage about this device remember this device is specifically designed for fat people Anti-fatness may hurt all of us, but fat people are its intended targets. The impacts on fat people, especially fat disabled people, should be at the center here. 
It's also specifically designed for use as a barrier to medical care. Fat people with health conditions are often denied surgical care unless and until we lose weight. This is a new way to enforce an existing requirement. Don't just fight the device. Fight the requirement. The doctors are just trying to make sure you don't die under anesthesia in the surgery. Lighten up. It's not... They're not trying to kill you. They're trying to help you. I'm just letting you know. Like, Even the most optimistic studies show significant long-term weight loss is extremely rare. Someone my size, says Aubrey, I'm not sure exactly what size that is, but I assume it's large, uh, has a 0.8% chance of becoming thin in their lifetime. Healthcare isn't a reward for weight loss. Fat people shouldn't have to do the nearly impossible just to get care. Just because not a lot of people do something doesn't mean that it's impossible, by the way. Right? Of course. It's possible to lose weight. Is it not? Of course it is. You just don't eat stuff and you get a moderate amount of exercise. Yes. I'm f- I found that, that whenever I've lost weight, and I've lost a lot of weight in my life and gained a lot of weight in my life. You've probably lost like 10 of you over the years. Yes, absolutely. I found that diet and exercise is the way to lose weight. Yeah. And uh, the way to gain weight is to eat a bleep load and drink too much and be more slothy. And um, so really, it is, it's, 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 so you it's feel highly it is unsexy. possible. Of course it is. Of Even though is. not a lot of people do it. Even though not many people are able to achieve significant permanent weight loss, you still feel that it's within the realm of possibility. Uh, of course, I don't know. I don't believe that either. I think a good number of people are. I mean, sometimes it's tough. So there's a so, mental compo- con- uh, right? But it's a mental thing. Uh, so Aubrey feels that we should give content warnings. That's a trigger warning, but we're not allowed to call it a trigger warning anymore because the word trigger oh, is yeah, violent yeah. and can itself be triggering. So a content warning, if you're going to talk about the jaw locking weight loss device, ringing the alarm about these things is good. You should do it. And you should do it assuming that fat people, disabled people, and people with eating disorders will see these posts too. It will trigger eating disorder relapses and PTSD and flashbacks. This is why I got on the phone and on my Instagram. Remember my Insta video and I reamed the uh, Froyo place down the street mm-hmm. because they had diet froyos and that yeah, brought me back very to very triggering my for time when eating I had an eating disorder. disorder um Alice K Wynn Shattuck Esquire yes will you explain to the people at home this new tact that's being taken by the administration and all Democrats suggesting that Republicans want to defund the police and I will play a an exchange between uh, Petrovich Dusing and Jen Psaki. Something one of the advisors said this weekend, Cedric Richmond, he said Republicans defunded the police by not supporting the American Rescue Plan. But uh, how is it that that is an argument uh, to be made when the president never mentioned needing money for police to stop a crime wave when he was selling the American Rescue Plan? Well, the president did mention that the American Rescue Plan, the state and local funding, something that was supported by the president, a lot of Democrats who supported and voted for the bill, could help ensure uh, local cops were kept on the beat in communities across the country. As you know, didn't receive a single Republican vote. That funding has been used to keep cops on the beat. But at the time that was sold as uh, these local police departments might have a pandemic related budget shortfall, not we need to keep cops on the beat because there's a crime wave. Uh, I think that any local uh, department would argue that keeping cops on the beat to keep communities safe when they had to, because of budget shortfalls, fire police is is something that helped them address yeah. crime in their local communities. So those local communities. The White House's argument was the American Rescue Plan is going to be $1,400 checks. It's going to be vaccines, vaccinators. Uh, we're, it's going to put us on the path to beating the virus, not... It did those things as well. It was a pretty good bill and piece of legislation. All right, Alice, what's going on there exactly? Because the American Rescue Plan had no provision for the police in it. It was not about shoring up the cops. But it did have a lot of funny money, extra slush fund cash Mm -hmm. that flowed to state and local government to do stuff for the pandemic vaguely without a lot of ties to it, you know? So what is the uh, end game here? What are Democrats trying to do? Well, I think they realized that uh, the defund the police narrative didn't exactly help them very much in 2020. Uh, they recently did a big, you know, 
2020 election autopsy thing, um, including black and Latino groups did some, you know, analysis of how they did in the 2020 election. And what they found is that voters, in particular minority voters who live in areas that are susceptible to having more crime, uh, tend to be a little more on the keep the police side than the defund the police side. And that, um, that the whole, the whole defund the police messaging didn't do very well. So now since they all voted in a bunch of money that all these places didn't really need for the pandemic because the pandemic is almost over thanks to Trump and Operation Warp Speed. Uh, now, since they have all this extra money, they've decided to rebrand it as police money so that they can turn around and say that Republicans defunded the police by not supporting the big slush fund Wah-ha! money bill. Gotcha. Yep. It turns out it was a anti-defunding the police bill. By the way, is that why uh, police budgets were cut? Is because of the pandemic, according to Jen Psaki? Yeah. It wasn't. There was no defund the police push coming from anyone no, on the there was left, no, except there, Republicans there was, wanted to defund the police. Yes, I they assume. had been saying yep. that ever since. Uh-huh. Okay, from yeah. the beginning. Yes. Yeah. The Republicans. I remember showing Mitch McConnell and all the senators mm-hmm. in their dashikis, actually with their f- fist in the air. Yep. They wanted to defund the police. Exactly. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's it. I mean, that's a creative one. I do like yeah. it. It's also, I mean, the the whole thing, and we talked about this a little, but the uh, this whole thing continues the drama around the infrastructure bill, or maybe two infrastructure bills. They haven't really decided. But, I mean, yeah, if I were the Republicans, why would you negotiate over a bipartisan compromise bill if they're going to turn around and pass everything else they want with 50 votes anyway? Right. So, and, and lot, you, I've heard a lot of talk about this today, and people are still kind of befuddled. The thought is maybe that in, in last second it was uh, like uh, it was Bernie Sanders who said, "Hey, uh, I'll I won't vote for this unless you unless there's a second bill, right, with more stuff in it, right." So other people can play mansion, mm-hmm. apparently. Yeah, well, especially if you're trying to get 60 votes for the compromise bill, right? And the, I mean, the thing is, is I think that you don't necessarily have the 50 votes for the extra stuff. So hopefully we're safe on that front. But yeah, I mean, I could take it or leave it, to be honest with you, both bills. I James, you can have this one. If we have the compromise bipartisan bill for roads and bridges, then fine. If not, maybe they can divert a little more of the American Rescue Plan money into other things that need to happen, since there's well, apparently this... so much of that money to go around. Well, yeah. Let's go well, ahead with that. Well, cops should be all, all set, because that was the American Rescue Plan, clearly from the beginning. Was a police funding out. bill. Yes, I that's think. what I was That's what for. it seemed like to me. So, Alice, uh, do you have something else that you want to bring up? If not, I have one piece of housekeeping. Well, I did want to just do a quick update on the Surfside condo that mm-hmm. collapsed oh, yeah, in yeah, Florida. Yeah. So, Horrific. Oh, my gosh. I literally, I... The sign above the wolf. I don't know. That Is I that couldn't, me? Yeah, it must be. Um, I could not sleep last night. I kept having dreams about trying to get out of a building that was falling oh, down. So that was terrifying. Um, and... I like it's it, the stories that are coming out of there now yeah, are you've just, been uniquely bothered by this. It's very interesting. It's really been bothering me a lot. You, yes. It's I've been having like I said, I had nightmares all last night about it. Like I couldn't really mm. sleep properly because of it. And um yeah, but like listen to this story. So this is an interview with this woman who got out of the collapsing building. Um if Ileana Montagudo had waited another minute to listen to the voice in her head, she might not be alive. Uh, two more minutes. No, no, not even one. There was no more time, she said. Um, Ileana, who lived on the sixth floor of the Champagne Tower South condo that partially collapsed early Thursday morning. When I was running down the stairs, I went from six to five, then four. I heard a tremendous noise. It was infernal. She said the building was falling. Montagudo, who was in her 50s, woke up from a restless sleep and heard strange noises. She initially believed they were coming from an open sliding door on her ocean front balcony. I ran and tried to close it. But I couldn't. I imagined because it was unlevel already because of the movement. Wow. She recounted, I heard a crack, and when I looked, I saw a crack traveling in the wall two fingers thick. 
And Holy something hell. told me, you need to run. She grabbed her ID and credit card and a couple of religious tokens, including her Virgin of Guadalupe gold medallion, and fled. When she emerged from the building, there was complete darkness with smoke and water everywhere. She started praying. Uh, security ran out screaming that there was an earthquake and we need to go, and he helped her navigate through a wall of debris until they got out to safety. Wow. Isn't that unbelievable? Um... Oh, and listen to this one. This is um, a man who was on the phone with his wife who was inside the building when it collapsed. Oh, my God. A woman who was among those missing from the Champlain Towers South Collapse was on the phone with her husband moments after an outdoor swimming pool caved in and then the line went dead. Rescuers have still not found Cassandra Cassie Bilodeau Stratton, 40, who was staying on the fourth floor of the condo complex when she frantically called her husband and described a massive sinkhole beneath their fourth floor unit that had once been the building's swimming pool. Stratton last saw his wife on Monday of last week when he left South Florida for a business trip. I was in Washington on the phone with her the whole time when it happened, 1.30 a.m. He said he's pinning his hopes on the search and rescue teams as they dig through the rubble. Nothing new. They're just working hard, digging more. So what they're thinking, what they're sort of is shaping up to seem like it happened is there were these, like, really bad, apparently, drainage issues around the swimming pool, which was over the parking garage. Okay. And, and I've so heard the, an eyewitness talk about water in the parking garage, right. even on dry days. Yeah, so there was this maintenance guy who was saying that they would get one to two feet of salt water, standing water, in the parking garage when they had particularly high tides. One to two feet. And then salt that would just... water? And then so from the not, ocean. Right, so that's not coming from the pool. No, but this is like the pool is on top of right. the parking garage, and this is all held up by concrete with rebar in it. Right. And like concrete's like a sponge. It's so it's just hard, but it soaks things in. It's it's porous, right? So concrete water goes through concrete. So it's soaking in all these like feet and feet of salt water. And that gets in. That can rust the rebar that's in the of concrete. Course, it degrades corrosive. the concrete, all this stuff. So what, this is what it's starting to seem like is maybe the cause of this. So now you have the pool down here. It's on top of the parking garage. And the pool is, like, heavy with all this water. And that just collapsed into the parking garage and pulled the whole building down with it, basically. Wow. It's like what – I, I mean, and they're still not really – Yeah. Is that a different mm, pool? Uh, I don't – I'm not sure. So I think not from before. Not I don't know. I thought, but so they're saying it was like all water and debris and stuff. And like, oh. I mean, I don't know. And it could be, it could have contributed. There was blasting going on at other construction sites here over the last couple of years. Apparently people have been complaining that like it was really extreme shaking of their building as there's mm. blasting going. On. So it's probably going to be like multiple things here that contributed to this. But I mean, it's just like, it's mind-boggling to me that this whole building that's been standing there for 40 years could just like go down like this and it's like a total of nine seconds that 12 floors of building just like fell into the ground in a pile so now they're doing all these like rescue operations basically they're trying to do it from underneath so they're sending in the rescue teams through the parking garages because that's where they figure right. is going to be the most like pockets of air and space where there might still be people alive like in open spaces down there at the bottom and um so they're trying to go in from underneath but obviously that's like incredibly risky of because course, if yeah. anything shifts, so as they're trying to like pull stuff off, they're trying not to shift it too much so that A, they don't kill anybody who might still be alive in the debris and also so they don't kill the rescue teams. Like they've already had to pull the rescue teams a bunch of times because Fires they're like, and things. right. And they, they like have lasers pointed at everything to see so they can immediately detect any movement in the debris. And well, like Cassandra when, Stratton was beautiful. Yeah. So, um, Anytime it like starts shifting, they have to pull all the rescue teams. But yeah, Ugh, I what mean, a like, heartbreak! So they're still missing like 150 people right now that Ugh. they think are inside the building. But yeah, that is heartbreaking. What a terrible story. God, I, and the thing is, it's one of these things where there's no real resolution. There's, I mean, there's it's just a bad story. Yeah, there's no it's like not... but. No, it's no, but it sucks. Yeah, it's just bad and terrible, and it's terrible for the families. And it's terrible. Like I mean, I can't even imagine, like, what everyone there is going through. Well, try not to think about it, Alice. I know, but it's hard. It's really sad. Goodness. 
I mean, like, you can just be sleeping in your bed one minute and then a whole building falls on you. Oof. It's, I mean, I... Whew. So, uh, say your prayers, everybody. Hug your family. That's tone of oh, like when on, I say Alex. that. No. <laughs> I was going to have to bring something up, a personal point of What's problematicism. Wrong you want, you. Go ahead. What's the problem with me now? What did Why? I do? I don't understand. It's not just you. It's a, about 67% of the people I've known in my whole life. Okay. Including some very close friends of mine. Okay. You said you, that our daughter, who's about to have a game, has a game down at the field that's close to us. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. Down at the field that's close to us. Yes. Which, if you're looking at the camera, is that way. Yep. You pointed that way. Why? <laughs> Why don't you point the right way? I mean, it is kind of that it's way. It's not kind of that way. <laughs> you, unless you go that way and take a hard right until you're going that way. Why? My friend Mike used to do this constantly. So let's just go over there to the bar. It's like, what? the bar's exactly the other way. Really? It feels that you way to your, me. No, it feels you, that you way to me. You lost your right to point when, <laughs> when mentioning okay. things. Okay. Until you can learn to do it accurately. It's that way. The traffic light is that way. What are you? Okay. That goes for everybody listening, too. Either point in the right direction or don't point anymore. You can just go down to the pizza place. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it's directly opposite of where you're pointing. <sighs> okay, I apologize to you and everybody who's watching on video that I pointed the wrong way. Um, if you, if our listeners would like to take this up with me as well, you can shoot us an email. That is burnbarrelpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on social media, Burn Barrel Pod on Twitter, facebook.com slash burnbarrelpodcast, burnbarrelpodcast on Gab and Parlor. We're on YouTube. You can leave a comment there if you want to complain about my pointing. Uh, that's Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel there on YouTube. You can also find us on Patreon, Locals. Check it out. We look forward to talking to you again tomorrow like we do every day.